Travel consideration provided by. When you die, are you going to heaven or not? You can know for sure. Heaven or not. Dot net. Solitaire Grand Harvest. People just can't help themselves. Solitaire Grand Harvest. Take the nine. Get your own Solitaire Grand Harvest. Solve endless levels and enjoy fun challenges. Want to get that grand feeling? Download now. It's free. Tomorrow on ET, Gypsy Rose Blanchard's post-prison interview. I have many regrets. With the man she married behind bars. He's my man. What they're revealing about starting a family. I have been waiting for this all week. I Happening now. Upset, anger, um, all kinds of emotions. The family of Matthew Guerra now reacting to the arrest of a father and son for the double murder that also took his pregnant girlfriend. From start to finish, we tell you what police are now saying really happened that week. A bipartisan effort might be the solution to better international trade between the U.S. and Mexico. That's according to Senator Ted Cruz and Congressman Henry Cuellar. Coming up, we explain how they plan to expedite the expansion and construction of international bridges. And I'm tracking our next weather maker. It's moving in as we speak. It's going to bring some areas of rain. I'll talk about when we'll see the rain and how much we can get in just a bit. The News at 5 starts right now. Did you know she was pregnant? Oh, always oh, fake news. So. That is a man accused of helping to hide the bodies of Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra. Ramon Preciado and his son Christopher arrested last night for their alleged parts in the murders. But today more charges have been filed against the father and son. Christopher Preciado charged with capital murder. Now two more additional charges of abuse of a corpse and alter, destroy, conceal a human corpse. His father, Ramon, is also charged with abuse of a corpse and the newly added charge of alter, destroy, conceal a human corpse. We're also, for the very first time, hearing from the family, Gatter's father and stepmother speaking to KSAT today. Eric Hernandez reports they're hoping for the full extent of punishment for both men. Upset, anger. Um... All kinds of emotions, all kinds of emotions just going through. Gabriel and Raquel Guerra are breathing a sigh of relief after Christopher Preciado and his father Ramon were arrested Wednesday night in the deaths of their son Matthew Guerra, his girlfriend Savannah Soto, and their unborn child Fabian. That was uh, definitely a, a relief of mine that, you know, I can hold someone accountable. I've been talking about um, justice for the three of them since it started. Gabriel and Raquel say neither of them know who Christopher and Ramon are. According to the arrest affidavit, Matthew and Savannah met Christopher to allegedly sell the marijuana. We asked the Guerras about that information after they had previously stated that Matthew was trying to turn his life around. Matthew Ozen hasn't made the best decisions, um, but, you know, he, um, I make no excuses for him, but whatever he did, you know, I don't condone that at all. Uh, but that being said, like, it, no one deserves to be murdered, period, for regardless of what kind of activity you're in or what you're doing. Now this case moves to the district attorney's office, and the guerra say they want nothing less than the death penalty for Christopher Preciado. Now it's on the DA. Uh, he had said something about uh, the death penalty, and uh, I'm going to hold him accountable to his word. And um, that's the next process for me, is him confirming that. We did get a statement this afternoon from the district attorney's office about the case, and they say an additional capital murder charge could be added for Christopher for the death of the unborn child, but that hasn't been decided just yet. As far as the death penalty after an indictment, the Capital Crimes Committee will then decide whether to seek the death penalty or not. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Now, with the arrest come new details from the investigators who have pieced together an updated timeline. All of the events, according to police, unfolding in a small neighborhood in Leon Valley, all within blocks of each other. We start at the beginning. The new arrest affidavit reveals that the murders actually happened two days before 18-year-old Savannah Soto and Matthew Guerra were reported missing. Late on December 21st, sometime before midnight, According to investigators who looked at cell phone records, Matthew Guerra had searched for Charlie Chan Drive and Cary Grant Drive, and his vehicle records show he went there. According to the father of Christopher Paciado, that is where his son attempted to buy marijuana from Guerra, and depending on who you talk to, a fight ensued. 
Minutes later, that Kia Optima moved to 5903 Danny K Drive to an apartment complex parking lot, only to be joined minutes later by Ramon Preciado's Silverado pickup. Police say the surveillance video shows the truck pulling in with its lights off, and Ramon and Christopher appear to have some sort of an exchange. Then the two drive to the back of the complex. It would be another day on December 23rd that both families were so worried they called the Leon Valley Police Department. The two had not been seen for days, and Savannah had not shown up for her appointment to deliver her baby. Fast forward three more days to the day after Christmas. That's when Leon Valley PD was tipped off that Gather's car was in that apartment parking lot, and the two corpses of the would-be parents were found both with gunshot wounds to their heads. Seven days later, police act on cell phone tracking information, and they think they've solved the mystery. Just last night, blocks away from the crime scene at that same Charlie Chan Drive and Cary Grant Drive area, Ramon Preciado was confronted by police, who they say quickly admitted to his involvement and that of his son. And, of course, we'll continue to follow this case on air and online. New at 5, a 21-year-old man is charged with capital murder for killing a man in a convenience store in Fredericksburg just two days ago. You may remember this. We brought it to you yesterday. Fredericksburg police say Awaz Cinco Rapet was taken into custody just before midnight last night. According to investigators, he is the masked gunman in surveillance video and photos posted on the department's Facebook page. They say after entering the store on Highway 16, he put on that skeleton mask you see there and fired a gun, hitting and killing Arthur Cortez. They say he demanded cash from a store clerk, ran from the scene. As we said, Cortez is dead. Police say Crime Stoppers received tips that led officers to a motel where they found Rappin. He's booked in the Gillespie County Jail. In a rare moment in politics, both sides of the aisle seem to agree that funding for expanding the bridges between Mexico and the United States needs to happen and happen fast. John Paul Barajas with how Republican Senator Ted Cruz and Democratic Congressman Henry Cuellar believe delaying this project is costing everyone trade, jobs and money. He joins us live. Hi, JP. Steve Ursula, that's right. Last year, there was more than $836 billion in U.S. trade between the U.S. and Mexico. 40% of that happening right here at Laredo's World Trade International Bridge. Both Guayar and Cruz say they hope to increase those numbers in the years to come, but say expanding and building new international bridges has become a time-consuming struggle. Lawmakers explain when building any bridge in an environmental review is needed, but when that bridge is cross-country, a presidential permit is also needed. Previously, the presidential permit wouldn't be given until after the review, which the lawmakers say dragged the projects out. Now, through a bipartisan effort, they have secured language that a conditional permit can be granted while the environmental review is taking place. Bridges in Webb County here, in Cameron County, in Maverick County, bridges all along the Rio Grande River, four different bridge projects that now will have the green light to go forward. This is a win for Texas farmers and ranchers. Stakeholders at and one of those bridge projects Ted Cruz was talking about was right here, Laredo's World Trade International Bridge. Currently, it sits at eight lanes. They hope to expand it to 18 in the years to come. Coming up at six, we'll also hear from a local store manager about how this will all impact their business. In Laredo, John Paul Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. Let's go to a traffic problem right now. This is I-35 at Ben Zingelman talking about trucks. You can see one on its side here. Looks to me like this may be the on-ramp from Ben Zingelman to I-35, not I-35 itself. But you can see that truck has been on its side for quite some time. The cleanup is underway, but no details on exactly how long this roadway will be closed. Unseasonably cool out there today, 43 in the morning, 56 for our high temperature, the average high being 63. And you see plenty of cloud cover overhead. Those clouds are slowly getting lower and lower, and now we're starting to, 
to detect some of the clouds and even a few sprinkles on authority radar. This is all I could really find. You get on the south side, a little between Palo Alto College and Elmendorf, and that's where we have a few light sprinkles. Now we're going to see this activity fill in a bit more as we go through the evening. We'll have the rain showers gradually actually picking up through this evening, and we'll see some accumulations here and there. We'll get into those details in a moment when we have more time. Temperatures right now 46 Del Rio, 51 Leon Springs, feeling the chill out there. 61 in Seguin, that's the exception. 53 right now in Micah. We'll talk more about the rainfall tonight, how much we could get, and the next system that's on its heels when that impacts us in just a bit. All right, thank you, Adam. Across America, the first day back to school after the holiday break, a deadly one near Des Moines, Iowa this morning. A sixth grader shot and killed, and authorities say the 17-year-old gunman is dead tonight. That shooting happening at a high school in the small town of Perry. It's about 40 miles northwest of Des Moines. About 7.30 this morning, law enforcement say they were alerted that an active shooter situation in progress at that campus. Deputies reportedly arriving within seven minutes of the first call. The sheriff there saying classes hadn't started yet. There were only a few students and faculty members in the building at the time. The principal and five other people injured. Authorities say that gunman took his own life. Take a look at this dramatic video. A man literally going airborne in the courtroom and attacking a judge during a hearing in Las Vegas. The judge had, judge had just denied the defendant bail when a camera caught him jumping over her bench. The judge fell to the ground. The court officers jumped in. They tried to stop the man. You can see the officers and the defendant throwing punches at each other. The judge and one officer take it to the hospital. The suspect eventually taken into custody and now facing a felony charge of battery on a protected person. According to the suspect's lawyer, he says his client has been diagnosed with mental illnesses. With just 11 days till the Iowa caucuses, Republican presidential hopefuls are taking some tough questions from voters on the trail. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley will have the chance, though, to speak directly to Iowa voters again tonight. Yeah, both presidential hopefuls set to appear in back-to-back -to -back town halls hosted by CNN. Our Washington correspondent, Julia Benbrook, gives us a look at their final push in early voting states. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley are looking to beat the odds as polls indicate that they are battling it out for second place in the race for the GOP nomination. First of all, I don't play for second. I never have, and I'm not going to start now. I really believe if you guys come out and stand by me on January 15th um, and we do this thing in a big way, um, I'm going to be the next president. Despite Donald Trump's commanding lead, his top competitors have been hesitant to criticize the former president directly on the trail. During a campaign stop in Iowa, a voter accused DeSantis of going soft on the front runner. So I think what the media wants is, is they want Republican candidates to just kind of like smear him personally and kind of do that. That's just not how I roll. While DeSantis has gone all in on Iowa, Haley made it clear she's already eyeing next steps as she spoke to a crowd in New Hampshire. You know Iowa starts it, you know that you correct it, and then my sweet state of South Carolina brings it home. That comment received immediate pushback from Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds, who's supporting DeSantis in the primary. On social media, Reynolds said, quote, I trust Iowans to make their own decisions. No corrections needed. DeSantis and Haley will speak directly to those Iowa voters again Thursday evening in back-to-back -to -back town halls hosted by CNN. The town halls are happening just hours after a shooting at an Iowa high school just about 40 miles away from the town hall venue. With that shooting top of mind for voters in the audience, it will be interesting to see how the candidates handle any gun control questions that are asked. Reporting in Washington, I'm Julia Benbrook. It's straight ahead, the holidays may be over, but the shopping continues. The new year could mean ringing in a good price on some big ticket items. We're going to show you some of the deals being offered this month. I'm Myra Arthur, and here's what we're working on for the News at 6, an interview with San Antonio City Councilman Mark White. He talks with Garrett Berger about what happened before he was arrested for DWI. White says he drove another council member home. How White describes his fateful last week. That and more coming your way today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. 
The holiday credit card bills haven't even come in yet, and already there are more sales that we're supposed to be checking out. Yeah, and if you wanted and waited on buying a new TV, you're in luck. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moore. It says January is a good time to buy. After you ring in the new year, you can ring up some deals. It's no surprise that the start of the year brings sales on items like fitness trackers, treadmills, and ellipticals. But also keep in mind that Martin Luther King Jr. Day falls in January, and this usually means big deals around mattresses. Expect more mattress sales in a couple of weeks, but right now, the Casper Original Foam Mattress is $1,100 for a queen size at Walmart and Best Buy. That's $200 saved. Consumer Reports tracks prices on its top-rated products all year and found some deep discounts right now, like new sheets for that new mattress. These microfiber sheets from Milani are $32.85 on Amazon. As we get halfway into January, look for super deals for the big game. With the Super Bowl coming up, a lot of TV manufacturers and retailers have big sales on TVs, so if you're looking for a new set to watch the big game, you're in luck. Right now, this 55-inch Samsung OLED TV is $18.98 at Amazon. This 4K OLED is among the best TVs Consumer Reports says it's ever tested. And don't forget about the sound. This sound bar from Samsung is less than $500 at Apt Electronics, Amazon, and Walmart. That's $80 saved. It comes with a wireless subwoofer. January is also a good time to find a deal on a humidifier to help with the dry winter weather and to find a deal on a treadmill to help with those resolutions. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Taking a look outside with live cam, we saw very, very little sun today, Adam. Yeah, and if you're uh, really hoping for the sun, and I know a lot of us could use it by now, we will be getting it by late tomorrow morning. We'll have a lot of sunshine breaking back out. Until then, we have some rain to talk about. Not like what we had the other day, just some light activity, but still some moisture headed our way. Notice those rain chances at 60% this evening. That's mainly drizzle to start and then very light showers thereafter as we get closer to 9, 10 o'clock all the way through midnight. Notice by sunrise tomorrow, it's out of here. By 7 a.m., it's all far east of town and especially uh, closer to the Gulf Coast. So here's the setup, here's the situation. Another wound up system here. You can see the counterclockwise swirl in northern New Mexico moving into north Texas, the Panhandle area. Of course, some snow on the cold side of this indicated by the blue colors here. So we're expecting two to six inches in parts of the northern panhandle from this system and even more from system number two, which we're going to get to in a moment. First, we need to cover this. It's going to have a weak front move through as well. Here's our future cast. I think this one does a good job of illustrating what you can expect, generally speaking, on the radar through the night and into tomorrow morning. You're not going to see much over the next couple of hours on the radar, just some very faint light green echoes out there, but some drizzle developing below the radar beam. And then we get some light sprinkles, very light showers, 9, 10 o'clock. Then through midnight, we'll see some areas of rain coming through. Some embedded moderate showers are possible. I think this is ex exaggerating the intensity just a little bit. Nonetheless, some moderate showers possible briefly with this between midnight and 3 a.m. And then by tomorrow morning at sunrise, what's left of it is all far east of town. So we're not looking at a big window of opportunity here in terms of rainfall. And then it's all sunshine thereafter, by the way. We'll have a lot of sunshine for the majority of the day tomorrow. The window of opportunity is just overnight tonight, and by sunrise tomorrow, I think our chances are off here in San Antonio. A few tenths of an inch is what we can expect, uh, by and large, but of course, if you get one of those moderate showers, you could get a little bit more, maybe a quarter to a half an inch. Cross your fingers for that because it's going to be the rare exception. System number two, hits on Monday. Let's briefly talk about that. System number one moving through right now. Number two is this swirl up over the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. That's going to be headed our way and it's going to make it here by Monday. It'll drop temperatures a little bit for us, but its primary impact is going to be gusty winds. Yes, we could have a brief a few thunderstorms move through the first part of the day on Monday. Better chances East Texas and into Louisiana. And this again will bring some snow to the panhandle, but very windy for us on the back side of it. Coming up at six, we'll talk more in depth about the wind gusts we can expect behind that system Monday evening, Monday night and on into Tuesday.
tomorrow, turning a little breezy in the afternoon and west wind at 10 to 20. Some clouds early at 7 a.m. at 48 degrees, then a sunny day, 60 at noon, 67. Our high temperature here in San Antonio, Pleasanton up to 70, Canyon Lake 65, Bandera Pipe Creek at 67. Notice the mornings, upper 30s, Saturday and Sunday. Otherwise, a beautiful weekend, sunny highs in the 60s. Again, talking more about that next system coming up at 6. All right, Adam, thank you. All right, Spurs take on one of the best, if not the best team in the NBA East early tonight. Yeah, and when they met earlier in the regular season, the Bucks won that game in Milwaukee, and they really took it to the Spurs in the first quarter. After that, the Spurs played much better. Trey Jones knows that they have to come out swinging first tonight. And how's Wimby doing when it comes to NBA All-Star Game voting? Coming up. Happy birthday to Spurs rookie Victor Wimbanyama, who is no longer a teenager. Today, he turns 20 years old. On top of that, the Silver and Black will host the Milwaukee Bucks tonight. Zach Collins is out with a right ankle sprain. Malachi Branham is listed as doubtful with the same injury. And Doug McBuckets is out with a right forearm contusion. This is the second and final regular season meeting between the Bucks and Spurs with Milwaukee winning the first one at home, 132-119 back in December. And in that game, the Bucks jumped out on the Spurs in the first quarter, leading by as many as 20 points. Just our start was um, the part that hurt us the most. Uh, we came out first quarter, I think they hit seven threes uh, and had 16 points. What they say? 16 points in the paint, I want to say. And so, um, you know, other than that, outside of the first quarter, we outplayed them. Um, we outscored them in two of the last three quarters as well. And so, you know, we get out to a good start and hopefully set the tone early. Um, and just, you know, carry that throughout the game. Obviously, third quarter has been a struggle for us at times as well this year. And so um, getting out to a good start there as well and just trying to um, maintain that throughout the game. It's an early tip tonight at 630 and it's the Spurs first home game in the new year. Led by Giannis and Dame, the Bucks come to town after losing at the Pacers last night, 142 to 130, dropping their home and away series to Indiana. The Pacers took control of the game in the third quarter by outscoring the Bucks 47 to 29. Now the Pacers have won five straight and they've beaten the Bucks twice in three days. Despite averaging a double double this season with 18.9 points and 10.2 rebounds per game, fans are not showing Wimby very much love at all in the 2024 NBA All-Star Game voting. The first fan returns are out and Wimby is not in the top five in the Western Conference among front court players. He has 14 double doubles and 29 games played this season. So let's check out that list. Here's the top 10 in the West front court players. LeBron is number one with more than 2 million votes. Kevin Durant is second. The Joker is third, followed by Anthony Davis and Kawhi Leonard rounding out the top five. Paul George is six. Alperin Shingun seventh. And there's Victor at number eight with 221,200 votes. Chet Holmgren and Carl Anthony Towns round out the top 10. The NBA All-Star Game is Sunday, February 18th in Indianapolis. Something tells me he will be on that team, though. Uh, he will. He'll be in the rookie game. He'll, he'll be in the All-Star Week in some way, shape, or form. I think he still makes the team. Yeah, I do, too. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. We'll be right back. Cloudy, not much dampness yet, but turning damp tonight with areas of light rain. A few tenths of an inch here and there. Then we get into a lot of sunshine tomorrow. 60s for highs and sunny Friday through the weekend. Mornings, though, dipping into the upper 30s this weekend, so you'll feel that chill. Our next system hits on Monday. 30% chance of a few storms and with it, very windy. We'll talk more about that wind at 6. Thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5. World News Up next.